As we all know around here, when you go woke, you go broke. Today's hearing will help us better understand what Congress can do to ensure that activist stakeholders will not encourage woke corporate activism as we have seen recently with Anheuser-Busch, Disney. Although every other word coming out of their mouths these days is woke, our friends have proven famously unable to define what they mean by woke. So I did a little research, and I want to help with the etymology of the word. Woke comes from the Indo-European root weg, which means to be strong, lively, alert. That root grew into woke, awake, wakefulness, but it also grew into the closely related word vigilance. The opposite of a vigilant, woke investment strategy is a negligent and inattentive investment strategy. Or to put it more simply, when it comes to climate change, if you don't have a woke capitalism, you're going to have a broke capitalism. I was watching President Trump's um, town hall meeting on CNN last week. You could kill the baby in the ninth month or after the baby was born. I did finish the wall. If I'm president, I will have that war settled in one day, 24 hours. He had boxes sent to Chinatown, Chinatown, where they don't speak even English in that Chinatown we're talking about. First, I saw Donald Trump blame Vice President Pence for failing to steal the election for him on January 6th. But we also saw Trump castigate and blame Jean Carroll, the woman he sexually abused in a department store and later lied about and defamed. And watching these two glaring cases of the GOP front runner for the presidential nomination in 2024, blaming the victim for his crime made me see what's happening with these hearings on Washington. They're part of an effort to deny Americans who live in Washington the right to participate in representative government and then to blame them for their own disenfranchisement and their own lack of representation in Congress. This is clearly an attempt to diminish our Second Amendment rights. I refuse to allow the erosion of our Second Amendment rights to further disarm our population, making us less safe as a further push toward communism, because that's what happens. They say, we want to repeal the Second Amendment. Mr. Speaker, we don't want them to repeal the Second Amendment. We want them to read the Second Amendment because the Second Amendment would ask us why we are allowing people to go into elementary schools, Walmart, supermarkets, churches and synagogues all over America with AR-15s enabled sometimes with the stabilizing brace as in Dayton, Ohio, Boulder, Colorado, Colorado, Springs, Nashville, Tennessee, and assassinate our people. If a foreign government were doing it, we would declare war on them. But since we're just allowing the gun industry to spread these weapons, weapons of mass destruction around the country, they want to allow it. I would like to zoom out on, on this one problem. Biden's national drug control strategy is 150 pages. The words God and faith are not mentioned one time. People need a purpose to be happy. To quote Robert F. Kennedy, I know that's awful hard, quote, unemployment kills, end of quote. The gentleman is somehow looking for some kind of religious test, which is explicitly forbidden uh, in the Constitution of People for Public Office in the drug control strategy. Uh, what about the free exercise clause? What about the establishment clause of the Constitution, which says that the Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion? So surely it can make a difference in terms of people's individual lives and individual paths to recovery. People will derive sources of strength from many different uh, places, including religious faith, including their friends and their family, including psychology and so on. But the idea that our drug strategy is flawed because it doesn't put religion in the center seems to me to be preposterous.